In studio with me now is Edward Kisvete. He is the chief executive of Alexander, Alexander Forbes, rather, and he's here to talk financial well-being. That's a new term, sexy term, potentially a buzzword. What exactly do we mean when you're talking about uh, having a sense of financial well-being? I think we all understand the notion of well-being. You know, you experience well-being when everything in your life is in line with your expectations, when you're generally contented, no surprises, uh, and, and so financial well-being, in the same way that we speak about emotional well-being, spiritual well-being, physical well-being, is an important aspect of overall well-being. Mm. You can't, Nazipa, have um, stress at home and be productive at work, or vice versa. If you're unhappy in your job, you're going to go home and talk to your significant other about it. And so we are integrated beings. We are not you know, compartmentalized. And so the notion of well-being um, includes also having a sense of well-being about your finances. At a product level, how does one attain financial well-being? What is the product that you are bringing to market? So, so first of all, this is not a product. It's a different dialogue, different conversation. The, our industry is focused on preparing people for retirement. But there's a, flawed assumption, a few flawed assumptions in that. It supposes or presupposes that people are willing to save for retirement. Mm. It presupposes that they have enough money to save for retirement. In fact, what happens is you are borrowing from the present to pay for the future. Um, and so we have come to realize that an important insight for our industry is to look at the entire journey of an individual over the entire lifetime. And not just a, a sense of feeling good because we're preparing for retirement. The second flawed assumption is that the industry works well. Right. And we know from our previous research that we've done, published in, in, in last year and the year before, in the benefits barometer that Alexander Forbes produces, that already today, the current level of contribution of the average member will mean that they will retire poor. And that's not even talking about people who are not in a formal employer-based uh, retirement savings uh, or retirement planning uh, arrangement. And so increasingly, what we are saying is this is not just about selling more products to people. It's stepping back and saying is what are all the various constituencies uh, or constituent components of your entire financial journey? Because remember, you have one stream of income generally that must fund your present needs and provide for the future needs. So what I'm hearing uh, as you're explaining this new mode of engagement is, a, is a, con a stronger focus on the individual and what that individual needs along that journey. It's a shift in the way we're thinking in the industry, but what does it mean for your business model? That what are you going to be doing as the pioneers of this idea of financial well-being yeah. differently from what we've known Alexander Forbes to be doing up until now? So traditionally and historically, our business was focused on business-to-business -business, uh, relationships. So generally, our clients would be the trustees uh, of, of, of pension funds, the employers, um, HR directors, etc. But actually, if you think about it, those are simply arrangements that are put in place to impact the life of an individual member within a fund. And so within our own organization, we have to obviously respect and understand the formality of the institutional arrangements, but ultimately have a conversation with the individual about how we can improve their overall financial well-being. And so for us, it means a stronger shift towards the individual or so-called retail uh, um, aspect of our business. And we are, we've made this transition five years ago, and we're beginning to step up the extent of the work we need to do in order mm. to serve the individual. A stronger focus on retail, what does that mean for your bottom line? What are the kind of expectations you're expecting this to shift in terms of a revenue conversation? So obviously as a business, one of the outcomes of running a good business is you grow your revenue and your bottom line. But this is not primarily about that. Mm. Because the conversation does not start with how do we sell you more product. The conversation starts by making you aware of your finances. You know, we, another flawed assumption is we, sim we think that by simply giving people financial literacy skills, they'll make the right choices. So the dialogue is facilitative. It, it, 
it does not just mean giving advice so that we can sell you a solution. It starts with debt counseling. It starts with um, just financial therapy. It starts with understanding what kind of coaching you want long before we get to the point of, of so as an industry, we step back and say, we have to invest upfront more to improve the overall sense of what a person is trying to achieve during their entire life and not just focus on, because what's the simple answer for us to say, give us more money, yeah. that's good for us as a business, we'll manage it and then you'll retire better off. But where does that give us more money come from? It comes from current needs. You have kids in school, you have a bond to pay, you have a car. And so no money is lying idle, doing nothing. And so even though con the contribution rates are low and we don't have compulsory preservation, uh, we don't have mandatory contribution, those are all things that the policy direction of government seeks to address. Mm. We are simply saying that's not enough because all of those will make incremental changes to the outcome of an individual. So we're trying to move from an incremental change to something that's going to have a societal impact and make a societal shift. Reading the press release, there's talk of a financial transformation. Now, we, we know that this is a, it's, it's, it's a government heavy word. We talk about economic transformation, social transformation. It's a new adding or, or, or integration of these terms, a financial transformation at a national level. What does your end game scenario look like? If this is the legacy that you're wanting to build at Alexander Forbes, what does it look like when we get there? So we think we need to engage in a different dialogue with all stakeholders. So firstly, government as policymakers and regulators are part of this. Secondly, the um, financial institutions like ourselves. Thirdly, the trusty communities who govern the pension fund industry. And thirdly, uh, lastly, the employer. So what has happened in South Africa is when we switch from defined benefit to defined contribution, we place the entire risk of someone's future on the individual. Mm. Probably at a time in our history where we more than ever needed to provide some safeguards. We do not have a system that provides effective defaults that secure someone's uh, um, retirement even, let alone his journey throughout his life. So we are saying is we need a different conversation that looks at the entire journey, not just the end, and that understands that there are trade-offs between the present needs and future needs and somehow find the best balance between this. A different national dialogue, uh, and this is one that is un underpinned by a journey towards financial well-being. A very big thank you to Edward Kesvitter, the Chief Executive Officer of Alexander Forbes, coming in to give us a taste of what this conversation could potentially sound like. And that's